What does it mean to be design obsessed? It's something our design team lives by. It's what sets apart good design from great. What you're about to see is an idea brought to life that brings inspiration from the outside in. Vicente Vasquez and I, Jen Giannotti Genis, will take you on a journey with some incredible creative people who will share their stories on what it means to be design obsessed. Coming, Vicente. I just had to get my coffee. Uh, no What's going on? So, are you excited? Are you excited for today? I'm really excited. Wait till you see what we have happening today. It's going to be fantastic. And we might end up at an Italian restaurant. You never know. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's get going. Let's do it. Because what you have to do is understand the visual language of your audience. It's the same food that they would cook at their home. But it's a little bit bigger dining room, a little bit bigger kitchen. Imagery and video has a design element. Storytelling is design. Everything is design. We can't walk away yes. from it. Ekta, how are you? So, so great to, to see, see you guys. Great yeah. to see you as well. Thank you for joining us. We're super excited to have you talk to us today um, on Design Obsessed and to talk to us about brand experience in terms of what you have experienced with Elf Cosmetics. So I'm very eager, obviously, to talk to you about um, a tremendous success that you had in 2019 with the development of Eyes, Lips, and Face. Do that thing with your eyes. Money, look. Let me see them lips. Mm -hmm. Attitude and give me face. Boom, boom, boom. Eyes, lips, face, wait. And then you released into TikTok um, that had over 1 billion views in six days. Reaching, I think, 10 billion-ish wow. or more. <laughs> tremendous, wow. tremendous success, uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> fantastic. Tell us, why do you think that was so successful? I think it goes back to, number one, you know, I love my CMO and she has three things that she's sort of ingrained in our marketing teams. You have to have the courage, the conviction and the curiosity. And I think if I go back to sort of the culture that we're building is, you know, always making sure that you're listening to your community. Where are they? Are they in these new channels and having your, you know, sort of head in the stars? Like, what are these new channels? And knowing that you don't know how to operate in them. So go get an expert who is an expert in that mm -hmm. and to help you sort of get started. And once again, it's a test and learn. Don't expect like monumental, you know, hey, it's going to give me this ROAS and it's going to give me this it's about testing and learning and sometimes those tests and learns give you those lead into sort of signals that hey here's where your community is and here's where you need to be and i think we we reacted to those signals really really quickly we didn't you know strive for perfection we yeah. went in we were like we don't know this right just let's let's just figure it out i think it's this attitude of like you know, feeling is okay. And, 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 you know, you never know, like it's gonna lead into a bigger thing. And that's exactly what happened. We went in with a very small thing. Then we're like, okay, this is interesting. This is very interesting. <laughs> Let's now, you know, put some dollars behind it. And the next thing you know, eyes lips, you know, face happened. <laughs> that's incredible. So curiosity, conviction. Courage. And courage. And courage. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order, but all three need to go together for sure. They right? do. Absolutely. Ekta, thank you so much for sharing your time and your insights with us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it was an honor and a privilege to be here. And remember, stay design obsessed. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in New York. We're on our way to go talk to Jody at Base Beauty. She's going to share some great insights on the digital space. Wow, look at this place. It's cool. incredible. It's Hi, Joe. So you. great to see Welcome you. Welcome to Beast Beauty. Thank you so much. Love this space. So cool, but what's with all the bells, Jody? Okay, I love that you asked that, and thank you for noticing, because we have a collection of vintage bells in the office. I was having so much self-doubt in my career, and I needed a way to remind my heart and my head that good things happen every day. So I started ringing a bell when great things would happen. What it does is it teaches my body that the good things happen every day. So when there are bad days, it doesn't hurt so bad. So let's ring some bells today because this it. is a really great day. Such a great idea. So Jody, really excited to talk to you about brand experience in the digital world today. In your opinion, you know, how have brands and experiences in the digital space changed the world? 
Well, first of all, every single brand is a digital brand. So even if you think you're a local business, you might be a global business thanks to digital. So it's completely changed the game of how we need to, as marketers and creators, think about brand experience. How do you think design influences digital, digital content and that experience online? We are always meeting brands across multiple touch points. And we're not maybe like thinking about it in that moment, but it becomes a reflex that we build a relationship with a brand. Yeah. It becomes so intimate and special for the customer to feel invited into the brand experience. And then that customer is your advocate, right? And that customer is gonna be sharing in the digital space more about why that customer loves your brand. It's an incredible opportunity to have a lot of people on your team cheering for you. From a design perspective, how do you think design can help influence that experience? Everything, because it's digital, it's in our pockets, it's in our hands, has a design element. Language has a design element. Imagery, video has a design element. Storytelling is design. Everything is design. We can't walk away yes. from it. <laughs> so when I think about like people and organizations and our clients, every single person in that organization is a creative person. Mm -hmm. They might Their creative might not show up in a video like this, but their creativity is infused into the the business, right? It's infused into the product. It's infused into what that product offers customers. Yeah. So design is everywhere. Smell is design, yeah. right? You walk into a hotel and there's a scent that makes you feel something. That's design. Yeah. It's all around us. We, we, we can't avoid it and we need to embrace it. So when you're creating a brand experience out there in the digital world, there's Facebook, there's TikTok. How do you guide people to say, what is the right platform for my brand? I like to start not in the what is the platform, but is it who are we as a brand? What are our values? What's our mission? What's meaningful to us? And then look at the platforms that are available to us and say, where are these customers who care about these values? We want to connect with them. It's almost like we have a party bus. We're going to drive it up to you know the front door. Who wants to come on the party bus with us? So I would think first about the brand, why the brand exists, why it's meaningful in the world, and then look at the platforms and evaluate, is our customer there? And can we interact with them in a meaningful way? Right. So I always love going back to values. That's how the customer shops. Mm -hmm. And if you stick with your values, you stay in your lane and you really commit, your people are gonna find you and then you're gonna be able to grow your audience as well. So talk to me about building your brand community. I love thinking about this the way that actually one of my clients in the Colgate organization thinks about it. And she thinks about the digital landscape as a physical store. And if a customer walks in, meaning that customer leaves a comment, that customer sends a direct message, that customer um, responds to an email, and the sales team inside the store ignores the customer, is that customer gonna to wanna to shop there? Is that customer gonna to wanna to linger and explore and browse? No, so that's what responding to comments, responding to direct messages, responding to emails, and being a two-way street in communication with the customer means. It means that you're building a relationship, you're nurturing relationships, so that when the customer is ready to shop mm -hmm. for your product or in your category, who's gonna to be top of mind? The brand that has a real relationship and is grateful for that exchange. Right. People want that engagement, they crave it, and they notice if you don't do it, right? They might not be ringing the bell every time right. a brand responds to their comment, but they'll notice and feel a little you know, hollow inside about this brand ignored me, they did not respond to my question, I did not get a, a suitable response to my problem, and they're gonna remember that when it's time to shop. What would you say is next? So we see live live content as like ready to explode. You already start to see a lot of it out there. And then edutainment. So tell me more, what is that? Educating through entertainment, right? So let's say. Like we are right now. Right, like <laughs> let's say I'm a complicated um, skincare brand with tons of science. A customer can't learn the science the way that the formulator is, right? Like, and they don't want to. They want to be entertained. I think that's what part of the rise of TikTok is it really leans into edutainment. Um, so leaning into that more, leveraging live as much as possible. Then you're, I'm really on the party bus with that brand, right? Because they're going live right now, and I'm sitting right, I'm sitting right next to them. What we're able to do through design is um, create pe uh, an audience of people who are just so focused on supporting your brand and being. Part 
part of the story. So everything we've been talking about today is not a brand pushing things out one way, right? These aren't ads, right? Young people, if you talk to a young person, if you sit like an 18-year-old, they know it's an share, ad right away. Right, Swipe. They call all the content ad, right? They're very, very savvy to the fact that marketers are trying to reach them. So, you know, it can't be a, a, a one-sided street. It's not an ad in a magazine, right? It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a start of a conversation. It's nurturing. You know, we think about content creation and design in the digital space much like we would in, you know, um, wooing celebrities to love brands, right? It's a nurturing relationship that happens over time, little by little. And that's an amazing story to be able to tell as a marketer. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. It's been wonderful to talk to you, Jody. Thank you. Well, I'm so inspired by you, Jen, and your creativity and your you know complete focus on design obsession. Um, I think it's an incredible initiative. We're all obsessed at Colgate about design obsession. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Jen. If you don't know Patsy's, you don't know New York. So, Jennifer, how are you? I'm so, so good, good to see you. How are you so doing? Great to Pleasure. see you. How's everybody? How's the family? Everyone good. How about you? Everybody's great. Thank you so much. Happy to have you here today. Thank you. It's Thanks always a pleasure coming. to be here. Thank you. I'm cooking up something special for you today. Come on inside. Wonderful. Let's go. The most popular dish, most requested on the menu since day one, spaghetti and meatballs. This is why I'm never going to be skinny. <laughs> None of us. But you don't trust a thin chef. Is that correct or what? <laughs> These are veal meatballs. A lot of people say you make veal, beef, and pork, but Grandpa Patsy was 100% veal. And of course, you got to put the fresh basil on top. Makes nice. And there's your spaghetti and meatballs. Perfecto. Bon manja. appetito. Manja. Bon appetito. Manja, manja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> looks fantastic. Can we go eat it now? Let's go eat. Let's have a seat right here. Yes. And put this great dish Your right over on here. on the table already. <laughs> Very nice. Wine. It's got to be Italian with wine, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Sal, you know, we're talking about brand experience. And tell me, from your perspective, what exactly is in your sort of secret sauce here that makes people come back over and over again, over 75 years, right? I think it really comes back to being consistent. There's only been three chefs in all 77 years we're here. It was my grandfather's name was Pasquale, that's where the name Patsy came from, mm -hmm. my dad and myself. And we even buy from some of the same suppliers. I think one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten was a customer who's been coming here since I'm a little boy. And of course, I greet him at the door. Welcome, nice to have you back. Hope you enjoy everything. And he says to me, without blinking an eye, he says, I know what the food's gonna taste like before I sit down, that's why I come back. Mm -hmm. Great compliment, great fun. I think the other fact that it's very important is it's the family here, the Scott and the Miller family. Grandpa and Grandma founded this place with the idea of it's the same food that they would cook at their home, but it's a little bit bigger dining room, a little bit bigger kitchen. Mm. And he always told me, and I was fortunate That same to know, love, too, when you walk in the door, that's for sure. You know, for Italians, food is love. Yep. It's 100%. Absolutely. This is how we show our love in many ways. And he would always say the most important thing is you thank people for walking in the door, number one, because they got a lot of places to choose from, mm -hmm. and then you make sure they leave happy. That's what it is. You want to make people feel like they're coming home. And I think that's the greatest compliment. Nancy Sinatra, she said something in, in, in my cookbook. She said, to me, Patsy's is more than a restaurant. It's a touchstone. Yeah. So many great events that they've had here throughout the years. And of mm -hmm. course, our father, Frank Sinatra made us famous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good PR guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. One of the best. <laughs> so that experience that people have when they come here, you and your family really are so genuine and you care for all the thousands of people that come through here and come back through the years and the celebrities, the thousands of celebrities all hanging on your walls downstairs come here and you treat everybody with the same authenticity and love. When I think about brands out there today, you know, there's something really special about that. It's, it's rare, and you know, the word familiarity from family, mm -hmm. that's what it is. And you feel like familiar, you're here. And especially now, everyone's gone through such crazy things the last few years of the pandemic. It's really nice to feel like that sense of belonging, yeah. the sense of coming home. And I can't tell you how much I have to thank my customers for that loyalty. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we have four generations of Scott and Miller family working here now, that's since my grandparents. And there's more than four generations of families that have been coming here and bringing people. And I always make a joke if someone comes in and 
the young lady is pregnant, I say, oh, you're making another customer for us, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's really a love of what we do. I have the luxury and the opportunity and the gift of potentially making someone happy with what I do. Yeah. And that's, 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 it's, it's one, it is, it's a gift to have that. It's wonderful. What would be one thing that you would share with everybody when they're thinking about their brands and whatever that is and how to create a really authentic experience for their brand. I think the most important thing is to be authentic. Be who you are. Don't try and be someone you're not. I think that's also contributed to the success of us for over 77 years. We're a Southern Italian Neapolitan red sauce restaurant. Not one day Sicilian Trattoria, Tuscan. Mm -hmm. We are who we are and I think if you stick to who you are and you do the one thing the right way I think that's going to show because you can't fake that. You can't fake you it. You can't fake it. And I think that's what will ultimately come through to someone who's trying to get a message across about themselves and their brand. Yeah. Here's Sal to that, Sal. Salute. God bless. Salute. Cheers. Chintan, right? Chintan. Times Square, the epitome of design obsessed. There's so much inspiration everywhere around us. Right now, we're going to go talk to Cheryl about how design influences culture. Cheryl! Hi! How hey. are you? Great to see you. Let's go talk. All right. We're so in Times Square. Crazy. I in know. like the center of the design mecca of the world. The design Times mecca Square. of the world. It's truly the crossroads of all humanity. It really is. Know, in many ways, right? You know, One of the things that I really want to talk to you about is how design what better place to talk about it influences culture? Well, design is really about the totems of various tribes mm -hmm. in the culture. Mm -hmm. And what that means is whatever audience you have ha is really associated with certain design. And that design reflects their values, mm -hmm. it reflects their emotions, it reflects their heart, it reflects their soul. So you, Everyone needs to understand the heart and soul of their brand. That's absolutely key. Otherwise, they're not going to get the heart and soul of that tribe. Yeah. And that person is not going to then engage with the brand. Really know who you are. Make yes. sure that you are um, really tuned into that. And then also really make sure that you're tuned into whoever your tribe is or yes. who you want your tribe to be. Yes, who right? you want your tribe to be. Right. There are ways to do this. First, you need to know what's going on in the culture. Mm -hmm. Culture at large, the global culture, there are nuances and sensitivities, mm -hmm. despite the fact that we're global. Mm -hmm. Then, you need to know what's going on in their life yeah. and their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You need to know their daily rituals, you need to know their habits, you need to know all their pop culture, their mm -hmm. streaming preferences, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then, and only then, can, will you be able to actually figure out how to create design that really resonates with that group? Yeah. Why? Why? You're going to tell us why. Yes. Design is sensory. It's not just visual. It's a sensory experience. And there's a hierarchy of sensory inputs. The first and foremost, which everybody agrees with, is visual. Absolutely. The second is hearing. The third starts getting debatable. Okay. Aristotle said smell, but I think things smell a little, little different then. Yeah. Than they Probably. do now. Yeah. Even like they smell a little different right now. I know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he said smell, taste, and touch. I say third is taste because we have all these great restaurants. Look at them all. Yeah. There's like a million right yeah. here. So taste, then smell, then touch. So you need to basically orient your brand visual language, all visual language, mm -hmm. all of this visual language to a visual, a sight-driven species first, and then bring in the hearing. And hearing is really important now that we've had COVID mm -hmm. because of all of the um, digital inputs mm -hmm. people have. Mm -hmm. And having a sonic brand, mm -hmm. branding, mm -hmm. really important, mm -hmm. a sort of a sonic signature. Tell so. me more about that. So we have the Intel inside. Yes. Dun, 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 yep. Dun. Yep. Everybody remembers that yep. because, oh my God, you hear that, you go, oh my God, Intel exactly. inside. Right? So having some kind of branding like that that acts like a, a, a sonic logo mm -hmm. is really important. Why is, is sound so important for that experience? People remember sound 
It's not like smell, which is hardwired right into your memory zone, mm -hmm. but they get a, they get a feeling, they get an ambiance, they get a vibe, they get an experience mm -hmm. from sound. Mm -hmm. It dimensionalizes and sort of pulls it into 3D, if you will, if you've got 2D graphics or something like that. The other thing that's really important about this whole sensory thing is there's a hierarchy of visual memory. Mm -hmm. And that is critical from a design point of view. So tell us more about that. In the hierarchy of visual memory, so we remember color first. Yeah. So whatever your brand essence is, it needs to be linked to your color. <laughs> then, then you have um, symbol, yep. so that's shape or logo mm -hmm. or something like that because people remember something like the intel inside yeah. but they remember it in a visual way okay. so you remember a shape okay. like the nike logo yeah. simplicity really or complexity of shape or does it matter simplicity yeah absolutely yeah. simplicity is really yep. key yep then third is number because numbers are like shapes mm -hmm. and the last thing we don't really remember words at all <laughs> we don't Keep communicate in words we communicate in symbols yep. colors hearing, look, sonic signatures, smell. We're very sensory human beings. Yeah. So what would be one thing that we could take away from as we move into the future and we think about brands and we think about how to build stronger connections for brands? Sensory. Sensory. And remember the hierarchy. Hierarchy and sensory. Yeah, sensory, really key. Not just flat, not just 2D, really sensory. Mm -hmm. And remember the hierarchy, visual, mm -hmm. hearing, mm -hmm. taste, mm -hmm. smell, touch. Got it. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're amazing, Chuck. Oh, you too. Should we go check out some of this crazy inspiration all around us? Yeah, 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 right yeah. Now? let's do it. Let's go. All right. <laughs>